Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Aussie Fish Keeping. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the easiest aquarium fish to care for. In particular, we're going to be taking a look at seven species that are just so easy to care for. They require little to no effort whatsoever, and they are perfect for both beginner and experienced aquarists. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into today's video. So in no particular order, the first fish that is super easy to care for are white cloud minnows. So white cloud minnows or white clouds are a super common and cheap aquarium fish. And they're mainly used in really small setups or even sometimes in outdoor ponds. They are obviously super easy to breed and care for and they require little to no effort whatsoever. They have a pretty basic diet and they don't really need any extravagant water conditions to survive and thrive in. Not only this, but they are an awesome looking species. You can get the gold variant or you can get the normal variant. And I think you can also get long fins as well. So they are actually a cold water fish as well, which means they don't actually need a heater in their tank, which is perfect for beginner aquarists who may just have one fish tank and they don't want to spend too much money on it. These guys would be a perfect option for that. And in fact, these guys can actually get a little bit stressed if the water is too warm. Now, going back to the pH, these guys can live in anything between 6.5 to 8.5 and they'll do pretty well. But yeah, they're just a great option for either an unfiltered or filtered aquarium. They're just a super good option for anybody who wants an easy fish to care for. So moving on to our next easy fish to care for is a Madaka. So Madaka are a really awesome species of fish. Here in Australia, you can't get too many variants, but there are obviously the nice blues, platinums, blacks, and tigers, which are the most common and most readily available. So these guys actually originate in Japan, where obviously it snows a lot, so therefore these guys can also withstand really low temperatures as well and they can also go in a temperature of anywhere between 18 to 24 degrees celsius as for ph for these guys they do prefer a little bit of a higher ph of anywhere between 7 to 8 anything above that can become a little bit toxic for these guys but they are a very hardy fish nonetheless they are also quite a small fish as well, meaning they don't need obviously a large amount of water and they can be kept indoors or outdoors all year round here in Australia. Not only this, but they are a pretty cheap fish as well. Generally, if you just get an assorted Madaka, it'll set you back anywhere between five to seven dollars. And then as you go up into the rare strains, you could be paying anywhere between 16 to 20 dollars per fish. These guys also have a super simple diet and they can thrive on any really nutrient rich fish food, even on live brine shrimp and black worms and also frozen foods. But yeah, besides that, they are also a great communal fish. They generally stay around the top of the water. So if you do have some biofilm in your tank, they can actually break that up a little bit and even eat a little bit of it. As well as that, they are plant safe, so they can be kept in a planted aquarium with no troubles whatsoever. And yeah, they're just an awesome little fish that you can get if you don't want to spend too much time and effort into your fish tank. Moving on to our next fish, we're going to switch things up a little bit and we're going to go with a catfish and in particular a Corydoras catfish. So a Corydoras catfish or a Cory cat is a super common catfish species in the aquarium hobby and they are super popular and readily available throughout all countries and states. In particular, the most common variants being the pepid quarries, bronze quarries, and albino quarries. All of these make for a perfect low maintenance fish and they can go in pretty small sized aquariums. They can do well inside without a heater, although if it does get too cold anywhere below 18 degrees, you probably would want to get a heater in there just because their preferred temperature is anywhere between 20 to 26 degrees Celsius. Not only this, but there is actually a really wide variety of these guys out there, although they can get a little bit more pricey. So variants like the Panda Coris or Julii Coris or Orange Venezuelan Coris can set you back anywhere between $12 to $20 each. So if I was a beginner, I would probably just stick to Albino, Bronze or Pepe Coris as they don't cost as much and they are still just as easy to care for. 
These guys are also like a pH of around 7 to 8, although they are very hardy and can withstand little fluctuations in that. Not only this, but these guys are a super unique and personable fish. They'll oftentimes swim up on the glass and they won't always just sit in one spot like your typical catfish. But yeah, they're definitely one of my favorite catfish species out there and they're an awesome, easy to care for aquarium fish. And I would definitely recommend them to anybody who's looking for a unique low maintenance fish. Moving on to our next fish, we have Grammys and Bedders. So a lot of people don't actually know, but Bedders are in the Grammy family. Therefore, meaning that Grammys and Bedders are pretty much the same sort of fish and they can withstand the same water parameters and temperatures. And if you know anything about fish keeping, you'd know that Bedders are a super easy to care for aquarium fish which also makes many Grammy species super easy to care for as well. So just to name a few, Honey Grammys, Licorice Grammys, Croaking Grammys, Sparkling Grammys, and obviously just your normal Dwarf Grammys are all super easy to care for hardy fish. So what makes these guys super unique is that all Grammys are actually labyrinth fish. So a labyrinth fish is pretty much a fish that has an extra organ known as the labyrinth. And what this helps with is breathing oxygen from the surface of the water. So oftentimes you'll see bedders and gouramis go up to the surface of the water and take a gulp of air. And this is actually one of the reasons people think you can keep bedders in small jars because they technically don't need any sort of aeration to breathe. With that being said, they can do perfectly fine in a no filter setup as long as it is the right size and it has plant life in there and substrate just stuff for your fish to interact with so it doesn't go crazy so bedders and grammys are obviously super easy to care for they have a super simple diet as well and you can feed them live black worms frozen food and obviously dry flake food and pellet food and they will do perfectly well so they do like softer water, which is why a lot of the times you'll see people put Indian almond leaves in their tanks. And these Indian almond leaves pretty much just lower down the pH, which is more desirable for the bedders, obviously. As for a stable pH level, you're going to want to go from anywhere between 6.5 to 7.5. Obviously, these guys can withstand really quite large fluctuations in comparison to other fish. As well as this, these guys are actually quite cheap and here in Australia, most places sell males from anywhere between $10 to $15 and females from anywhere between $20 to $30. Obviously, there are a lot of strains like koi bedders, dumbo ears, giant bedders, which will all go for a higher price, but just for your standard half moon placats or veil tails, they're generally a cheap fish. With that being said, another great fish for any small setup or low maintenance setup is a better fish or gourami. So moving on to our next fish, we have a super easy live bearer and this one is going to be a sword tail. So sword tails are a pretty small fish and they are definitely one of the most hardy fish you can get in the aquarium hobby. They can withstand really large fluctuations in water parameters. They don't need a heater whatsoever. They can go indoors or outdoors and they don't need too big of a tank. So sword tails are obviously really common in the hobby and you can get them from pretty much any pet shop. They are also super cheap and obviously super easy to care for. So they also have a super simple basic diet. And sometimes you can get away with just feeding these guys a flake or pellet food. Obviously, I would recommend switching up their diet with maybe some black worms or some frozen food or something. But technically, you can get away with just feeding these guys dry food. pH isn't really a big problem with these guys. They can withstand pretty much the same as bedders. So 6.5 to 7.5. Anything too high or too low will obviously start to cause problems. But yeah, they're not too fussy when it comes to pH. Like I said before, they do not need a heater whatsoever and you can have them in small patio bowls or even large pond outdoor setups. They are also plant safe so you can keep them in a planted aquarium with no troubles whatsoever. 
and they are a great community fish as long as you don't have any more aggressive fish in that tank that may nip at their tails not only this but i think these guys are a great fish to get for kids especially just because they are really easy to sex and breed and the males have that super interesting long sword tail but yeah another great super easy to care for fish is a sword tail as for the next fish on our list we have danios now in particular i'm talking about your super common leopard denios zebra denios long fin denios those super common ones not really things like celestial pearl denios or giant denios so denios are a super interesting little fish and leopard denios actually kind of resemble a small trout that's in my opinion at least anyway but yeah besides from that they do look super cool and you can get them in a variety of colors and patterns they can withstand really large fluctuations in the water parameters and they do not need a heater whatsoever they can also be kept outside in ponds although not many people do it and they do actually prefer keeping their denios in heated tanks obviously they will do better in a heated tank but it's definitely not needed for this species whatsoever you can also keep these guys in pretty small setups of anywhere around 20 liters and up these guys do like really fast moving water so if you can i would put a either a fast flowing filter or a power head in there just for them because they are a very fast swimming fish and they'd love playing in the flow although it's definitely not necessary to have especially if you just want it in a low maintenance setup but yeah these guys obviously as well have a super simple diet and you can feed them stuff like mosquito larvae that might be growing outside in little puddles and stuff you can feed them dry flake food or pellet food you can feed them frozen food or obviously any other live food as well so these guys for the most part are plant safe although i have found in some of my tanks they are beginning to eat some of my plants like my ludwigia and they are also starting to nip at my uh floating plant roots so the only problem with these guys as well is that they are quite nippy at times and it really depends how many fish you have in your tank. Obviously, if you have only a few denios, they won't be too nippy. But if you have a large group of them together, you will find that, that some tails will get nipped every now and then. But I don't find it a really big problem, at least with my denios. So I don't think it's really that common at all. Another great thing about denios is that they make the perfect dither fish for any breeding setups. This doesn't really relate to how easy they are to keep, but they're just a great fish for dithers if you want them. In a tank with something like a ram sick lid that you're trying to breed down the bottom, these guys will stay up the top and your rams can like defend their eggs from them. And yeah, they're just a great dither fish. But with that being said, another great fish for a low maintenance setup is a denio. Moving on to the number one easiest fish to care for. I don't think this will come as a surprise to many people, but I've put in the first place guppies. So guppies are probably what everybody gets as their first aquarium fish. I know they were definitely my first aquarium fish just because they're super awesome looking and they're also really easy to breed. Obviously, you can get thousands and thousands of different colors and patterns of these guys and they are just a super hardy fish. Now, in saying that, you can get some really bad quality ones every now and then, but if you're buying from a local fish store, which generally supplies from local breeders, you will find that you get really nice quality guppies. Although, if you go to a chain pet store that gets their guppies from really large-scale wholesalers, you may find they can die quite easily, just because they are prone to a lot of diseases. But with that being said, they can withstand pH from anywhere between 6.5 to 7.5, and they do not need a heater in their aquarium at all. These guys can also be kept outside in ponds or even in a tank inside. And they are a great fish to put in ponds actually because they do take care of the mosquito larvae. As for their diet, you can also get away with just feeding these guys dry foods, although obviously it's best for them to give them stuff like live baby brine shrimp and frozen foods. But yeah, I just think they are a great aquarium fish for any beginner or anyone who just wants to have a low maintenance, easy to care for fish. But yeah, they are definitely one of the easiest fish to care for in the aquarium hobby. But with that being said, that's going to bring us to the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed and I hope I help you guys find a new fish for your aquarium. If you haven't already, please make sure to go subscribe and comment down below. I subscribed. Also comment down below any of your thoughts on the video. I love going through the comments and reading them all. 
But yeah, I guess with that being said, I'll see you guys in that next video.